So I'm here at Lex's shop here today. Some of you guys may remember we did a video showing off Lex's awesome Ram Promaster build about a couple months ago. We're gonna learn some of his build techniques here in this video. And we figured what better way to do that than by rebuilding my van again. gonna do the bed though we're gonna keep the kitchen the way it is maybe do a couple of little changes to it but the main goal is to redo the bed there were some issues underneath the bed with my storage I had my guitar under there because I put my surfboard under the bed instead of on the roof when I added that second solar panel a couple months ago I've had some issues trying to make space for all the stuff that I have between my guitar and then obviously the surfboard and my wetsuits and then anything else I want to put under there so we're gonna try to make something that's a little bit more efficient better use of space so I can store the guitar safely along with everything else that I have so yeah, we're wrong. So we can go right here, fine. 32 and a half. At this point, we're just kind of mocking everything up. We found the center point in the van, the center line, and that's kind of what we're gonna build everything off of. That's a pretty important thing to do here, just to make sure that the bed is square. We are planning to do drawers underneath this bed, so we gotta make sure that everything is nice and even so that the drawers can open and close properly and that's kind of what we're trying to figure out what the size of the drawer needs to be right now I've got the guitar on the floor here just trying to see if it's gonna fit and everything like that and just trying to get an idea of what we got to do okay so I'm about five days or so into the future right now turns out it's really hard to like film an entire build and then also like try to talk about all the details and talk about what Lex is doing and have him talk about it while also trying to get everything done in a timely manner and this project ran way longer than I think we were both thinking it ended up taking like five full days just to build the bed and it turned out really well we'll get to that later in the video here but I kind of want to just like go back in time and try to narrate and fill you guys in on what's going on so obviously at this point here we're just getting started with this and one of the things that Lex does is he builds instead of using like brackets to secure it to the floor he builds an entire C channel bracket to secure everything to the floor so this entire bed literally every piece of of wood that touches the floor fits along a nice C channel and that's a way to secure it obviously to the floor keep it from moving keep it steady but it also keeps it all lined up like I said earlier we are gonna do drawers in this build so you want to make sure that everything is perfectly aligned and will fit so that the drawers can open and close so that's kind of what we're doing here Using aluminum C channel, half inch aluminum, and it's designed so that everything just kind of fits the plywood. The half inch plywood fits right in between, you know, the two sides of the aluminum C channel here. And I think this is something that you can just get at Home Depot. It's not too hard to get. We cut it to size using a hacksaw. It doesn't have to be perfect. You know, it can be a little bit smaller, but as long as you kind of get roughly the right size, it'll act as the, I mean, I guess the foundation of the entire piece of furniture that you're trying to build here. In our case, it was obviously the bed. So from there, you have to drill holes though so that you can then mount it to the floor. And we used wood screws to screw it into the floor, but part of drilling those holes, this is also pretty important, is you gotta drill the hole to the right size, and then after that, you have to make sure that you bevel the hole using a countersink drill bit so that you can then have a flush surface so that when you're putting the plywood in there, it's not like being poked up by a screw that didn't go in all the way or something like that. So you gotta make sure that you do that as well. We did that, we also drilled holes in the sides as well, in the sides of the C-channel, so that then you can obviously screw it in and secure it once everything's all done so that it you know so that the bed doesn't go anywhere and so that it's actually mounted to the floor making it act like a bracket I guess you know and you could use just traditional brackets in this in this way instead but for us it was definitely better to do it this way so that we could then make sure that everything was aligned as we were building up At this point here, we have the entire C channel down. The foundation for the bed is completely set. We've also have a few pieces of wood cut and ready to go, and it is now time to start cross doweling. Lex uses cross dowel construction for all of his van builds. He did it in his own build. He did it in previous builds. He's pretty much always used it. He kind of has it down to a science. And we're going to put a mark that goes across both pieces of wood sure that those marks line up perfectly. I'm going to extend that line. We're going to do the same on this side. 
Take this, and we're going to extend that line. All right, so now we're going to take the cross dowel jig, and on this one, we're going to drill this hole down, and we're going to drill this hole through into that one. We're going to take this is called a witness mark, and we're going to take this witness mark and line it up with that line. We're just going to line it up perfectly with that line. We're going to do the clamp, and the first thing we're going to do is drill the 2564 hole. Drill the through hole, and then we're going to do the other one. Line up the witness mark. That piece is done. We are going to install the cross dowels. So we're going to take this and we're just going to push it straight in and twist it around and we're going to line that slot up perfectly with our drawn line. And in this case we all want to put a hole that's going to put take the screw that goes in and mates with the cross dowel. So we're going to again line up our witness mark. And all we need is a 7 16 inch hole right here. And that is one heck of a joy. You know, cross dowel construction isn't something that's new or anything like that. A lot of people do use it, but like I said, Lex kind of has it all down. He actually makes a custom jig to make it so that you can drill the holes appropriately and make sure that they're always lined up all the time. And he makes this out of metal. He has a metal shop. He loves working with metal. I found that out pretty quickly over the last few days while we were building this van here. And so the way that this works, basically, guys, it's really not that complicated. It allows you to take two pieces of plywood. We used half inch plywood for literally every Everything in this build. Everything is made out of just half inch plywood. There are no two by fours like in my previous bed. There's no three quarter inch plywood like in the kitchen here that the camera is sitting on top of. It is entirely half inch plywood and basically cross dowel construction allows you to do that. It, you wouldn't be able to do that with wood screws, right? If you took, you know, two pieces of plywood half inch and then stuck a couple wood screws in on each side, like that joint's gonna fall apart pretty quickly. It's not gonna really handle much and, and if you put any weight on it, it's just gonna collapse. But with cross dowels, you're taking a machine screw and screwing it in from one end and you're putting a cross dowel in the other end and then you kind of connect them all together and that creates an incredibly strong joint. I mean, to the point where you could put it down in like a triangle after you created this joint with the two pieces of plywood and step on it and it's not gonna break. It's gonna be completely strong and handle everything that you throw at it. So that's what we decided to do with this build. And like I said, this is something that Lex does with everything. So it's really not that complicated. You just have to use that jig. You drill a big hole for the cross dowel going one way and then you drill in from the side to create the hole so that you can then put the other piece of plywood on top, put your machine screw in after you you drill another hole which the jig is also designed to help you do and then you kind of just create that joint and you're just creating these joints at 90 degree angles using different pieces of plywood and we did this dozens and dozens of times to create this entire build and it probably does take a little bit longer it is a little bit more meticulous than if you were just to take a couple wood screws and use wood glue and stick it all together but there's a lot of benefits to doing it this way for one you can use half inch plywood so that keeps your weight down for two instead of using three quarter inch plywood or like two by fours or something like that, you're also saving on space. So you're maximizing that storage space, which is something that is really, really important inside a van build, especially a small van like mine. And then obviously it's also much stronger. And then there's the, the benefit of it being essentially like an erector set. You can take this whole thing apart and put it back together with a screwdriver. And we did that probably a dozen times while I was building this van and, and putting it all together. If we messed something up, which we definitely did a few times throughout this process, we were able to just kind of unscrew it and then take, uh, you know, obviously cut another piece of wood, put a couple more cross dowels in and then screw it back together. And it was like nothing ever happened. Like we didn't even make the mistake. So there's a lot of benefits to building this way. Lex is pretty passionate about this build style and I'm definitely going to be using it in my future builds.
once I learned how to do that whole cross dowel method that first night, the next few days just kind of became like a whirlwind of building everything and putting everything together. We started with three half inch sheets of plywood, four by eight sheets of plywood, and those are pretty heavy, you know, they're not as heavy as three quarter inch plywood, but they're relatively heavy, so we, you know, we had to kind of like work together to handle them and carry them and get them cut on the table saw and everything like that. And what we did is, you know, we kind of started with the base layer of the bed and there are drawers in there that goes about seven inches high all the way across. So having drawers in it, and that's what you kind of see us doing here. And then from there, we built a second compartment on top of the drawers. And this needed to be a huge compartment, guys, like the entire length of the bed because it was specifically designed to fit my surfboard in it. I was trying to figure out somewhere where I could have a spot designated for my board and be able to just slide it in and slide it out when I needed it when I was about to go and, and paddle out for a surf session so that was kind of a really important thing and and then from there we built the bed platform on top of that but basically that bed is just kind of suspended over this giant gap so we had to figure out a way to make sure that it was sturdy and safe to sleep on so what we did is we kind of used cross towels all the way across to be able to create like a, a side along the right hand side and then on the other side we just used pvc pipes and, and had to cut custom size pvc to be able to fit in there uh, to support the bed on the left side and that's kind of what we ended up doing with that we did have to cut the two pieces the lower platform for the surfboard compartment and then the upper platform for the bed and kind of had to cut around the contours of the van and everything like that with a jigsaw and it definitely took quite a bit of time a few days to be able to get it all set up but the end result worked out pretty well from there we moved on to creating the actual drawers and you know I thought that that was gonna take like going into this I was like oh the drawers that'll take a couple hours that won't be too bad at all and boy was I wrong that process took the better part of two days to be able to create the actual drawers and build them. I had never built drawers before in any of my builds, so I learned a lot by just kind of watching Lex and kind of figuring everything out. He actually was able to route out the edges so that they all kind of interlock together. And then from there, we kind of sanded it down. We also took the time to like round out all the edges of the drawers themselves and then also like of all the wood inside the van so that everything is just nice and rounded so that if I am reaching in to grab something, I I don't like get a splinter or like cut my hand or something like that on a sharp edge of the plywood so definitely took the time to like really make the wood nice and kind of do the woodworking and that sort of thing and that worked out pretty well we also created a flap to extend the bed as well and mounted that using a couple of hinges uh, four different hinges and that just kind of flaps over and then rests on a ledge that we added to the other side on the kitchen here that's kind of sitting directly below the camera. And that opens up and creates the full bed and then kind of closes back up, folds into place, and then it creates the couch mode, which you see right now, which I'm sitting on right now. We also added though, like a metal trim, an aluminum trim all the way around the edge of that little bed flap, that bed extender, to kind of give it more rigidity and make it more stable. Cause it is only a half inch piece of plywood and we didn't put a leg on the end on the far end by the Kodiak. So we kind of needed to, you know, have that extra rigidity to make it safe to be able to sleep on. Lex, I cannot thank you enough for helping me rebuild this van over the past five days or so here. And I know it was definitely a pretty long stretch of time. We spent a, like a lot of time on this, guys. We literally did like five full, like 10 to 12 hour days every single day working on this. And you know, one of the things about Lex, he's a self-described belt and suspenders kind of guy. You know, if he's gonna do something like this, he wants to do it the right way. And if you take one look at his van, you know, in, in the tour that we did a couple months ago, that's pretty obvious, right? Just, just from even looking at it for a second. You can tell that he's very meticulous, very engineering minded, and he really approaches this in a smart way. And I learned a ton. I learned so much over the past week, and I am so grateful for this opportunity to work alongside Lex and to kind of pick up on some of his techniques and, and learning everything just from like minor things like how to hold the drill the right way and how to drill down straight to major things like how to build using cross dowel construction and these are things that I'm going to remember for a long time that I'm going to use every time I build something probably for the rest of my life so just a really really awesome opportunity that I am very very grateful for and in the end result was having this amazing new bed set up here guys I have like storage space now under this bed that I don't even know what to do with just wide open spaces <laughs> like that's a good problem to have when you live full time out of a minivan. So I'm very, very grateful, like I said, and I can't wait to apply some of these techniques to future builds. One thing I do 
do want to note is that in order to do this method, this cross dowel method that Lex uses, you do have to have a cross dowel jig. I mean, you, you can do it by hand and try to mash up all the holes and stuff like that, but it's a lot easier to do it with that jig. And I think I might have mentioned this earlier, Lex actually makes these jigs in his metal shop. I think he can get three quarter inch plywood jigs uh, online, but he said that half inch ones are pretty hard to find. And, and a huge benefit of, of doing this cross dowel method is that you can use half inch plywood instead of three quarter inch. So the benefit is that it saves you on a lot of weight in space and everything like that. I know I talked about that earlier. So using Lex's half inch jig is definitely a pretty good way to go. So if you are interested in like getting one of those from him or learning how to make one or that whole kind of thing, send me an email and I can try to get you guys in touch with each other and that whole thing. And you know, this is, like I said, this method of cross style construction is definitely a little bit more detailed. It's a little bit more meticulous, but again, the end result is something pretty incredible in, in the fact that I can literally take this entire thing apart. The entire bed, I can just take a screwdriver and in 20 minutes or so have the whole thing in pieces. And then actually, I'm probably going to do that at some point in the next few weeks here, take it all apart, paint it, and then put it all back together because I do want to get some paint on it and give it some color. Uh, so like that's just a cool thing that's like a really awesome thing i can do that over and over and over and over and over again and it's never going to wear out and it's just going to be a quality bed that i'm probably never going to have to rebuild for the rest of the time that i that i have this van here so again i'm very grateful for the opportunity to do this build with lex and it was just an awesome an awesome week a tiring exhausting but awesome week thanks for watching guys i'll talk to you all in the next video